All right, we got ourselves a generator here that another company came out and uh, condemned the motor. Said that they had shavings in there and there was a rod broke and basically be two grand to replace the motor. So one of the spark plugs was loose. So we're gonna check compression and see if we can hear anything. Let's go ahead and double check the obvious stuff just to make sure there's nothing dumb going on here. Had these stick in the winter time, and uh, sometimes you just gotta bend that up a little bit so it won't stick to the plastic. Factory calls it a, an adjustment. We are set on natural gas, which is what we're on. So we're gonna yank out this rear spark plug. We'll also, go ahead and just do compression test first and find out. Compression. Spark plugs don't look like they were even set gap wise either. It's nice. Let's see what it sounds like without the spark plugs in there. We're going to go ahead and shut the fuel off to it because we don't need that dumping in at the same time. So we set off the main stop over there behind the unit. I don't hear anything cranking, clanking. <laughs> Sounds pretty normal there. Basic compression tester here. Something you can find at Advance Auto or AutoZone, whatever. Nothing's fancy here. It's got a rubber seal on it, so it doesn't need to be super tight. Let's see what we get. Looks like 100. Yep, 100. So we had 100 pounds on that side. And I believe it's 5% difference. But I'll have to double check the book. Sometimes you're just best off to look. Make sure. Generally, they're going to be way off if there's an issue. Do it again. So we've got 195 on the rear one, and we had 100 on the front. Yeah, we've got, this looks like some valve issues, that's what it would appear. So let's go ahead and do that front one one more time. Now we need to check our valve clearances and all that, that could be out of whack. This is one of the few times where I've actually had a chance to get some real results out of the compression test. Generally, it's never a problem. Yep, you're only hitting 100, so that's quite a bit of difference. I'm gonna have to go ahead and take off the valve cover and let's see what our capping is. This is all metric, of course. I didn't bring those over with me, so I'll have to probably go grab my socket. I just removed the last screw off the cover. Get down to the lifters. Really? 
Wow, I wonder why. Not right there. There's that, that goes down to there. Yeah, you have a rod ripped off that dog. Check it out. Somehow, looks like it just stretched it until it snapped it. Yep, right here is... Piece of aluminum. Here's the other piece. That's beautiful. Damage done internally, you figure that thing's spinning at 3600 RPMs. It doesn't take long for it to destroy itself. This would not be the first engine I've changed. It would be one of the first ones on the larger, higher KW. Had a bunch of 7 KWs die back in the 2007, 8, 9 area, but not so much with this one. So, I mean, you need to do a complete teardown to make sure that there's not other damages, but the problem is that's not something you do out in the field.